Hi everyone and welcome to my A-level history revision video focused on Henry VII's domestic policy. So firstly with crown finances, Henry used a chamber system which meant that he personally controlled all the finances and didn't leave anything up to like any nobles or advisors, he dealt with everything. He employed these two guys called Empson and Dudley to travel around England and collect anything owed to the crown such as debts and bonds. He used bonds on nobles and just anybody pretty much and bonds were basically promises for good behaviour or you'd pay money. So this was another way of exploiting people for money to the crown. He got the French pension from the Treaty of Atafels, which made up 5% of the royal income. Finally, the revenue from lands owned by the crown quadrupled during his reign because he seized land from opponents such as the Earl of Lincoln who was killed at the Battle of Stoke in 1487. So basically he just he just took control of land and people's lives made everybody in debt to him so that he could increase his revenue. So now moving on to the failures of Henry VII's crown finances. The taxes that he raised for war um, provoked rebellions in Yorkshire 1489 and Cornwall 1497 and the taxes were never really collected properly. He was forced to give a lot of money to Maximilian, the Holy Roman Emperor, to stop pretender support. And during the last few years of Henry VII's reign, he became quite greedy with his finances, despite the fact that he was much more secure than he was at the start of his reign. So now moving on to Henry VII's relationship with the nobility. So firstly with successes, he reset his reign date to the day before the Battle of Bosworth so that he could use acts of attainder to arrest anybody who fought against him at the battle and arrest them as traitors. Now, acts of attainder are basically just arresting people. He used bonds and recognisances which would put nobles personally in debt to the crown and was basically just a way of keeping nobles under financial control. He would use wardship which is when he would take over estates and again, just control them by the crown, and he would employ loyal nobles that he trusted to control important parts of England. Noble support for any opposition to Henry VII pretty much died out after Lambert Simnel. He managed to gain support of some Yorkist nobles such as Thomas Howard, and he used acts of resumption to take back land that had been taken during the Wars of the Roses. And finally, there was an atmosphere of fear because Henry VII had them on such a strict leash financially that nobles had no choice but to support him, basically. Now some failures. Some important nobles, such as Earl of Lincoln and Lovell, were involved in the Battle of Stoke, 1487. Empson and Dudley, so the guys who were travelling around England to collect debts, were very oppressive and greedy and were pretty much just thugs. He was very greedy with crown finances, despite being a secure king. 60% of nobles were under bonds and recognisances, so that shows that he did not trust them at all if he had to put the majority of them under financial control. And the number of nobility that existed decreased during his reign. At the start of his reign in 1485, there were 50 nobles, but at the end of his reign in 1509, there were only 35. So this shows that Henry VII really reduced the power and influence of the nobility during his reign. And finally, just a little bit about Parliament tax rebellions. So during his reign, Henry VII increased taxes by 55%, but as you know, this never really was successful because the people would revolt by the tax rebellions and Parliament did not like these taxes and wouldn't approve them. So basically, his, all of his attempts at raising taxes for war were massive failures. 